Jumbo, everybody, and welcome to Africa. This is Garrett from the Kingdom Report, and today we're going to be going on to Kilimanjaro Safaris behind me, and we're going to see some of the most beautiful animals that the world has to offer. One of them being what is on my shirt right there, which is called a flamingo. So we're going to see flamingos. I, I love them, but we're going to get on there, uh, give you a little bit of history of the attraction, and then at the end, give you my Kingdom Report card, and yeah, we might just learn a few things along the way, too. So let's go on in. It's a 65 minute wait, let's do this. One thing I love about Animal Kingdom is just how immersive the experience is where you actually feel like you're there and Animal Kingdom is by far the most immersive because of, imagine you're Joe Rohde who pretty much created this park and everything. Like as you walk through the queue right here, you get names of the animals in English and then you get their Swahili names. And earlier I said Jambo, that is Swahili for hello. So time to wait in this line and show you some of the cool stuff. All right, so a little backstory to this attraction. So the story is, is that you and your friends are going to be going onto the Harambe Wildlife Reserve, which is an 800 square mile reserve for animals. Uh, and we are going to hop on a safari vehicle and we are gonna see all the amazing animals. So it doesn't sound that exciting, but in the past there actually used to be more of a story about Big Red and Little Red. Big Red was an elephant and Little Red was her child. And the story was, was that they had been abducted by poachers and that it was your job to go off and find the poachers and save the elephants. And that story changed, I don't know, I wanna say six, seven plus years back, but um, that's no longer the story. But still you get to go out there and you still get to enjoy the beauty of the African uh, Sahara and all, all its wonderful wildlife. So I'm, this is an attraction that no matter how many times I go on it, I always enjoy just because every experience is new one because all the animals out there are real. They're not audio animatronics like on the Jungle Cruise. So let's, let's, just, let's just get on board and see where the adventures take us. Right. Before we head into the reserve, my friends, just some safety rules we need to go over for your safety and of course the safety of the animals around you. Go ahead and make sure we do remain seated at all times for me, friends, even when I am stomped, even if you cannot see the animal for your safety. It's pretty bumpy out there. Sometimes I do have to brake and accelerate without any warning, so remain seated. If you're taking photos and videos, have your cameras out and ready. I stop for some of these animals. No copy. Now the copy is a pretty tricky animal to start with. They do have striped legs, just like a zebra. However, their closest known living relative is actually going to be a giraffe. And they share a lot of similarities with giraffes. One of which is actually going to be right on top of this hill here. This little ledge is a black rhino. Up up here on the left, black rhino is one of the smaller species of rhino. You can tell rhino species apart because of the size and shape of their mouths. More of us ladies, those are greater kudu, and some orange animals out there, those are bongos. Now the kudus are lovely ladies, they do not have any horns, only the males do, and they curl up in a large spiral shape towards the sky, so it's pretty easy to spot the difference between the two. Now the bongos, both males and females, have their horns. They are smaller, they do curve back, and sometimes they cross over each. The pink back pelican is going to get its name, because its back does turn a lovely shade of pink during the mating season. Now it's not a dark pink, it's more of a light dusty pink, so it sometimes can be a little hard to spot, unless it is that mating season. Now their wingspan is 8 feet wide. 
Now, of course, a friendly reminder for everyone who remains seated. After all, these are very real and very, very dangerous animals. Why well, not? It looks like they don't move much. They're just really good at conserving energy. We can actually move up to speeds of about 25 miles per hour. Quite large as well. Some Nile crocodile can actually grow up to a max. But sometimes you might see those crocodiles sitting with their mouths open as well. Doing so is actually going to create a nice cooling wind that's going to make them cool down those crocodiles, helping them regulate their body temperature when they have their mouths open like that. It's very similar to how your dogs at home will pant. Animals for us to spot out here because of that. Some animals you guys might be familiar with, and a few you're probably not going to be too familiar with. But don't worry, that's where I come in. Alrighty, as we head off the overlook, it looks like there's a couple Ancoli cattle that are going to be hanging out on our right-hand side here. Also called the Watusi cattle, after the Watusi tribe, it was the very first to domesticate them. Now, as you can see, their horns are really big. Not very heavy, though. The den there. African wild dog, also called the painted dog or the painted wolf. They're going to get that name because of the unique coloration on their coats. Now, just like our fingerprints, no two are the same. It's going to be how they tell each other apart. And they are really successful hunters. One of the most successful hunters, in fact, with the success rate of anywhere from 80 to 90 percent. They have very high stamina, very good at running their prey. Common eland. These giraffes are Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffe have more of a jagged and irregular spot, as opposed to reticulated. That is bearded wildebeest will, of course, have the white beards, and brindle bearded wildebeest will have more of the salt and pepper look to their beards. Migratory species, very hardworking. They are travel traveling pretty much constantly. Thank you. Some springbok on their s'mores. Now they are full grown, that is the biggest they're gonna get. Andrews are the monkeys with the brightly colored faces and behinds, just like Rafiki as that one just moved back into the bushes. There comes a couple more. Brighter the coloration, the more dominant the mandrel. Now the females are smaller than those of an Asian elephant and also in the shape of Africa. I don't see any other elephants in the area, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is probably a male elephant. Male <laughs> elephants, they do live by themselves. Actually, once they reach the age of maturity, they are kicked out of their herd for what to do and where they're gonna go. Luckily for us, they really like this area out here, especially these red clay pits. They love to dig their tusks, actually dig out the red clay and chew on it. Very, very similar to how we chew on bubble gum. However, those red clay pits, actually picking up something as small as a single peanut. They also like to flap those large ears back and forth to cool themselves down, creating a nice cooling wind over their back. They can actually Knocking down those trees actually does have the opportunity to, well, create some watering holes like the ones we see here. Now, these are greater flamingo. And even though they are pretty great, they are the palest pink species of flamingo. Now, they're also going to be one of the larger species right as well. Now, flamingos are not born pink. Flamingos are actually born a whitish gray color. So they get this pink coloration from eating things like shrimp, prawn, any sort of shellfish that has something called the beta carotene in it. That's going to turn these flamingos a lovely shade of pink. So it makes sense for these flamingos. It's of flamingos. It's a pretty fitting name for them. And flamingos do actually sleep and stand on one foot. Not actually in it's going to help them keep a really good grip of the ground, though, especially when changing directions at such high speeds. She does as well have those long black markings under their eyes, and that is going to help them absorb sunlight so they can see better during the day, because they are daytime hunters, as opposed to a lot of other big cats that are more nocturnal animals. Now, on the right hand side, we're passing by rhinos. Compared to the black rhino, these white rhinos do have a little more of a flat and rounded lip. They are more social animals as well, traveling in groups called a crash. That's a fitting name for them, though. Rhinos do actually tend to crash into things a lot. They have really bad eyesight, so they rely pretty heavily on their hearing. They can actually pivot their ears around individuals to one another, kind of like tiny satellites. And we can tell that this is a male because of his mane. His mane is going to get larger and darker as he gets older. Right now, it's kind of used as chain mail to protect him in case he gets into any sort of territorial disputes with other lions or other animals in the area. As you can see, he's fairly inactive. Lions are actually only active for about an average of four hours.
looks like the rhinos are all hanging out in this area. And if you look just a little to the left of them, close to us, you'll see a couple ostrich eggs there on the ground. Now, even though they are white rhinos, you might be thinking to yourselves, they don't look very white. Oh, well, it's actually a mistranslation. Their name is actually white rhinos with a V. However, Westerners misheard it as white, and the name just kind of stuck for them. This is a scimitar horned oryx. Beautiful animal. Very special. In fact, this is a critically endangered animal. They've also declared extinct in the wild as well. So you're actually only going to be able to see them and find them on reserves and zoos all over the world. And that's to protect them against things like poaching, natural predators, and habitat destruction. That could bring their numbers down to zero. That white coat of his as well will reflect sunlight instead of absorb it to help keep him cool. However, he's a little more to civilization, my friends. Do they have any wilderness explorers on board? The name of my truck. The code you need is Simba 1. Simba, Simba like the lion one. and 1 like Simba. the number. One. Now, you can get your badge opposite to the entrance at Kilimanjaro. Kaharini. Kaharini means go well. Qua and I also Harini. personally want to say Asante Sana, everyone, which means thank you. Asante thank you so much for riding with me here today. Once again, my name is Jordan. You guys have been riding the Simba 1. If you have any further questions, come on up to my front window or my front row. I would be more than happy to answer those questions that you may have. All right, my friends, so that was Kilimanjaro Safari, which is honestly one of probably my top five all-time attractions that I've ever gone on. It's truly more of an experience than an attraction. Uh, the thing I probably love most about it is just the educational uh, benefits that you get from it. One thing that Joe Rohde wanted to have when he created this park was having education because that was something that Walt Disney preached. He, he said that if you can make something entertaining as well as educational, it would last with people more and have a bigger impact on them. And I truly think that an experience like Kilimanjaro Safaris does just that. So before I do my Kingdom Report card, I just want to preach some, some words of knowledge to you is that Disney does so much with animal conservation, just environmental conservation. Um, it, it's something amazing where Disney is honestly trying to help save the planet. Anytime they um, build land here, they purchase land somewhere else so that they can plant trees and other things like that. So that's just my little message about conservation and uh, yeah, and Animal Kingdom especially does such a beautiful job. There's truly not another park like it uh, in the entire world. But uh, some fun facts for you is that I love the names that animals get on that attraction. As you see, I am wearing a flamingo shirt. So here are some uh, groups of animal names by Garrett. So you have a flamboyance of flamingos, you have a crash of rhinos, a tower of giraffes, a pride of lions, a, a bloat of hippos, unfortunately no hippos today. I do not know what a group of crocodiles are, but I can tell you that, yeah, those are about all the animals uh, that I know out there, but my favorite one is what we are, which is the King Report, and we are called a family. Was that cheesy? I hope so. But, all right, now on to the King, and now time for my Kingdom Report card. So, the King Report card for this experience, this attraction, um, I have to say I have to give it an A+, plus just because the use of real animals and creating an environment that is suitable for them, uh, where it actually it mirrors their actual environment is truly astounding. Walt Disney Imaginary and then the animal science uh, leaders that Disney has brought in is truly amazing. They brought in Anne Goodall uh, with to get some, I guess, some feedback and that. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen so on the Imagineering story, I forget which episode it is when they create Animal Kingdom Park. It, I, I love it so much. Joe Rody, thank you so much for doing this. But an A plus. Um, if I could give it higher, I would. But I, I love it, the knowledge. Every experience is a different one just because they're real animals. They interact in different ways. If you come later, you'll see the lions more awake. If you go, uh, if you go earlier in the day, you're gonna see more giraffes out. So every experience is different. I've never had the same one twice. So I hope that you get to experience this. Do you like this attraction? Uh, the correct answer is yes. If you say no, um, I don't know. No, I'm kidding, it's fine. But yeah, what do you, what do you think this attraction is, uh, is worth? Um, in, in your Kingdom Report card, but uh, again, this has been Garrett with the Kingdom Report. I hope that you had a simply uh, fantastic time. I hope you had a wild time, and 
check out the channel like comment subscribe all that good stuff and also if you're wondering what this thing behind me is this is actually called gorilla falls it's uh well i'm gonna be covering that on another uh i guess episode or vlog so stick around for more stuff on this channel but hope you had a wild of a time quaharini uh and asane santa i think that's it but bye Oh, one quick thing. It's a Asante Sana, not what I said. I don't remember what I said, but yeah. Bye. Welcome to this happy place. Welcome.